conferences like today are good for two things. One is it's good to meet people that you've not met before who are from other voluntary organisations to get a picture of what's going on for them. I think also it's the time to think and discuss those kind of issues. We're going through a lot of change with regards to the health reforms that are going on at the moment. Uh, the challenges faced by organisations such as ours which receive uh, funding from social care and, and health. Uh, so it was really to, to kind of consolidate my knowledge in those areas and to see what other organisations were, were doing and the challenges that they were facing as well. The diocese covers Manchester Greater Manchester. 40% of our parishes are in the top 10% most deprived communities. Um, so we are working on with the most vulnerable people and it's finding the resources to sustain that work is probably the biggest issue at the moment. We have been around for a very long time. What's interesting if you look at the history of our sector is that we have been there providing what we now call public services. Um, but we have been providing that for centuries, centuries before the state provided those services. And it's an important point to make because in the debate about contracts and um, the current political arguments about public sector reform, we have to remember this is the sector that has always delivered. There's a big, big challenge here. The rhetoric of fairness rather than equality of outcome is prevalent. Unlike equality, fairness is vague and highly relative. One person's fair is another person's unfair. Thus, fairness is difficult to measure. Local charities which previously received, uh, received a grant from, uh, say, the local authority, now, ha now find themselves having to compete for that money against private sector companies, against big national charities, sometimes against groups of workers from the local authority itself. I mean, I think um, one of the things that the sector is facing as a whole is, is we're in a bit of a gap. Um, clearly, the old world is ended. Um, the ways that charities could have identified funding, their sustainability strategies have changed. But yet, um, a lot of the opportunities that government is proposing aren't actually worked out yet. Um, there's no clear steer for um, a lot of the organisations are delivering services on the ground. The third sector is facing enormous cuts. At the moment, it means that we're always in a bit of a panic. We don't really know what's happening. We have to make sure that we work in partnership to support each other, to bring up the quality and make sure that the quality is there. Uh, I suppose as we move forward, it is uh, how, we, how we do more for less, I suppose is the obvious one. Uh, I think also um, how we rationalise a number of uh, providers in the sector. I think in Manchester personally, you know, there, there is a huge number of providers, probably too many, some would say. So uh, I think how we can build partnerships and consortia, how we can work better together, uh, sharing resources, stuff like that. I think the sector needs to face the challenges by fighting back. I think it needs to speak up and it needs to speak out. I think it needs to stop muttering to itself about how cross it is about some of the policies that are being implemented by this government and I think it needs to write ministers and MPs and tell them directly what's going wrong. If they're faced with the prospect of bidding for a contract that is too big for them, beyond their capacity, they've got to talk to other charities and other social enterprises in their area, their county or their city, and form some kind of partnership, some kind of consortium collective, so that together they can bid for the contract. We need to influence some of our key funders from the big lottery to the local authorities to central government about how they can help sustain what is good that's out there. We have to accept, I think, in the current financial climate, not everybody can survive. So what we really need to do is work together on making sure the really good things stay there and those things that we need to be able to deliver for our communities. We need to continue to lobby the government very hard so that they recognise the pressures that both communities will face in trying to deliver their agenda and also the pressures that the sector will face in supporting them during that process. We need to look at commissioning really seriously, root and branch reappraisal of commissioning. We need a much, I would sort of think, more vibrant procurement model that really recognises the value of local. We need to look at social investment. You probably know that the Big Society Bank, as um, initially envisaged, was 
um, something that Labour was developing. And we're still going to argue for that, but we're going to be a bit more precise, and that's what the next three months is all about. What sort of things, what sort of financing systems would you need to be in place to encourage you to become a mutual or employee-owned company? I really want government to start listening to the sector and I do mean listening, I don't mean coming out and talking, I mean listening because it's only when you do that that you realise as a government what you've got to put in place by way of support to really encourage the sector and see it thrive into the future. Talk to the sector, make sure that you're engaging, not just on a London basis, that you're engaging with the sector across the country to think about how we tackle the key issues. If you work with those people that know their communities, then you can make a real difference. And to drop this fairness agenda and get back to the equalities agenda and think about how we can make society more equal. Back off, leave us alone and trust us to get on with our work and stop thinking that either you or the private sector can do it better than we can. Make use of what the communities of people are telling you. Listen to them. It's not only big business who has a right to uh, a voice in this country. I think it's just great to meet other people from the voluntary sector, uh, to talk to them and find out what their challenges, what challenges they're facing and how uh, you know, but, but stealing ideas really, sharing and stealing ideas and looking at ways that we can work with other organisations um, to, to secure our future and, and other voluntary sector organisations' future. I think um, finding people who are surviving against the odds, um, creative ways of getting through, uh, particularly in, in some of the very kind of deprived communities, some interesting comparisons between and similarities between rural and urban issues uh, and some positive, you know, some, some good learning which I'll take as well. To hear that Deborah Alcott say it as it is, yeah. I've been trying to say that for years and when I say it, I get people upset but when she said it she didn't get a round of applause. No, she said it like it was and I think that was gorgeous because all we need is access to the resources that are out there. The last thing we need is another group being set up, giving them £15 million to come and tell us that we need to get organised. We've been, we're one of the most organised kind of like network going. Today I'm getting a lot out of meeting new people as they always do at these types of events. Actually talking to people about the issues affecting us as an organisation and also engaging with some of the people that we're working on around current initiatives. Obviously transforming local infrastructure is very big at the moment. We want to ensure that every infrastructure organisation considers the needs of lesbian, gay, bisexual and trans communities and being here gives us an opportunity to do that so that's really valuable.